segment 515 page number 131 seizure and confiscation under gst first we need to understand what is the difference between seizure and confiscation seizure refers to taking possession of the goods but the ownership is still with the taxpayer the department will take the possession of the goods from the taxpayer that is known as seizure if confiscation order is also passed not only the possession but also the title is taken away by the department and the department will sell those goods and they will not pay any amount to the taxpayer that is the difference between seizure and confiscation again i am repeating whenever seizure order is passed ownership is still with the taxpayer but the possession of goods will go to department when confiscation order is passed the ownership as well as possession will be with the department and the department will sell those goods will realize the proceeds will not pay any amount to the taxpayer these two arises because of search what is search identifying the premises where the goods are stored are identifying the goods which are in the transit which are evade like which are evaded in the sense like uh, they are trying to evade it or they have really evaded it so when they will try to evade or evade it maybe the goods are transported without e-way bill or those goods are transported without valid documents or in the stock records those goods are not available in the premises in that case those goods are illegal goods they are trying to evade gst with respect to those goods with respect to those goods they will seize or confiscate there are two situations where this seizure and confiscation will apply situation number one proper officer as per section 67 inspect the business premises to identify whether there are any goods liable for confiscation when the goods are liable for confiscation in the premises if the goods are not reported in the stock records so every product which is there in their premises should be reported in the stock records if it is not there then the goods are liable for confiscation so inspection was carried out at the business premises of taxable person or transporter or warehouse keeper if any unaccounted goods are found such goods are liable for confiscation so this power is there to the proper officer under section 67 now whenever they identify some goods like this what they will do immediately they will pass a seizure order to seize the goods from the place of business so what is the meaning of seizure order to transfer the possession to the department and once they pass the seizure order they will not only seize the goods but they will also seize the documents which contains the details of those goods like sometimes what will happen the person the taxpayer will maintain a dairy wherein all the unaccounted transactions he made he will note and keep so that dairy will be confiscated like the dairy will be seized because that contains the information about to whom he sold and how much cash he collected everything so that is known as documents containing the details of goods liable for confiscation so once the seizure order is passed by the department then the taxpayer is having two options option number one pay the appropriate amount to get it released so he can pay the amount and that will be released what is that appropriate amount tax and penalty under 122 subsection 1 what is that penalty under 122 subsection 1 hundred percent of the tax or ten thousand whichever is higher so the penalty under 122 subsection 1 is hundred percent of tax 100% of tax or 10,000 whichever is higher that will be taken 100% of tax or 10,000 whichever is higher will be the penalty under 122 subsection 1 and once the tax and applicable penalty is paid what will happen the goods shall be released and all proceedings shall be deemed to be concluded thereafter no proceedings nothing because he paid already the tax and the penalty everything will be released suppose if he is not having money to pay the tax and penalty then he has another option furnish security and get the provisional release means he will not pay tax and penalty instead he will execute a bond 
and the goods will be released but whether the proceedings are concluded no the proceedings are there because he is yet to pay the tax and penalty just the goods will be released provisionally because this person will say sir i don't have money if you release goods i will sell those goods realize the money thereafter i will pay then in that case first he need to execute a bond and he need to assure the department with proper security that he will definitely make the payment suppose if he is not going to make payment using that bond and security they will recover the money from him and he will get the goods but these goods will be final release or provisional release provisional release he will sell those goods realize the money and then make the repayment of tax and penalty that is option 1 and option 2 suppose if the tax payer has not exercised both the options then what department will do department will pass a confiscation order and they will give a redemption option under section 130 now so far whatever we have seen is section section 67 now we are moving on to section 130 which is a connecting section for this what does section 130 says if the person has not exercised option 1 or option 2 under section 67 then a confiscation order will be passed under section 130 once the confiscation order is passed he will be given an option to pay the fine now what is that extra that he need to pay tax and penalty anyhow he need to pay now extra he need to pay fine called as redemption fine what is the time limit within which he need to pay 3 months within 3 months from the date of confiscation order he need to now pay tax penalty along with redemption fine so redemption fine is the extra amount how much will be the redemption fine that fine will be fixed by the department but it should not be more than market value of the goods minus tax chargeable thereon because if it is more than that no one will come and pay the redemption fine they will say you keep the goods i don't need more than market value minus tax suppose if the value of the goods is 10 lakhs and the tax is say 1 lakh 20000 now you know if uh, they levy a fine of 10 lakhs you will say keep sir i don't need that goods because if i pay that and get also i will be at loss because i have to pay 10 lakhs to you i have to pay tax to you i have to pay penalty also to you that is 100% of tax by selling it i will not realize that much money also so that's the reason why that much maximum redemption fine should be not beyond that market value of goods minus tax chargeable redemption fine in case of conveyance so why conveyance see if the goods are being loaded in the conveyance even the conveyance also will be seized for example in the business premises there is a lorry in that lorry there are some goods and those goods are unaccounted goods along with the goods even lorry also will be confiscated alexis and to release that lorry they have to pay redemption fine but suppose if they pay penalty above even the lorry will get released if they are not paying the penalty under option 1 option 2 they need to pay the redemption fine separately for goods and separately for lorry is it clear if they pay penalty for the goods under option 1 or option 2 if they execute a bond everything will be released and only one penalty for goods suppose if they are not exercising option 1 or option 2 then confiscation order will be passed once confiscation order is passed redemption fine will be divided goods separate redemption fine and in case of conveyance separate redemption fine what is the redemption fine in case of conveyance tax payable on goods transported there on suppose if the tax penalty and redemption fine is not paid within 3 months what will happen if option not opted confiscated goods shall be disposed of and entire amount will be retained by the department not even 1 rupee will be paid to the tax payer this is about situation 1 in seizure and confiscation that is section 67 read with section 130 another situation where the seizure will come into place is seizure of goods during the transit that is whenever the goods are taken in a conveyance in the transit so the proper officer as per section 68 is having power to intercept the vehicle stop the vehicle and check whether these goods which are transported in that vehicle 
or accounted goods or unaccounted goods. If those goods are unaccounted, means what? Maybe e-way bill is not proper or e-way bill is not there or invoice details are not proper, etc. In that case, proper officer will pass a seizure order for seizure of both goods and conveyance. Conveyance carrying the goods are intercepted by the proper officer for inspection in transit. If the transporter was found transporting or storing such goods which are removed in contravention of the provisions of the Act, such goods and conveyance shall be liable for confiscation. Thereafter, what will happen? So, they will pass a seizure order. Seizure order for seizure of goods. And once the seizure order is passed, within 7 days, they need to pass a penalty order. So, first they will pass a seizure order. Thereafter, within 7 days, they will give a notice for living penalty. After giving notice for penalty, within 7 days, they will pass a penalty order. So, understood the sequence of events. So, what will happen first? First, there will be seizure order. After seizure order, notice for levying the penalty within 7 days. After notice within 7 days, they will pass a penalty order. And once they pass a penalty order, within 15 days of receipt of penalty order, we have to make the payment of penalty. Okay. Once they pass a penalty order, within 15 days, we need to pay the penalty. If you pay the penalty, but what is the advantage in option 2? We don't have to pay tax. Only penalty we need to pay. Tax we can pay later also, whenever really the goods are being sold. Are you getting this? But in the above case, we need to pay tax as well as penalty. Here, just penalty we need to pay. And once we pay this penalty, the goods will be released and all proceedings are deemed to be concluded. And this 15 days can be reduced in case of perishable goods. So, the time limit, if you see, once the seizure order is passed, thereafter within 7 days, notice for penalty. Thereafter within 7 days, penalty order. Thereafter within 15 days, the person has to pay the penalty and the goods will be released. But this 15 days period can be reduced for perishable goods. What if within that 15 days, that person has not paid the penalty? Then the goods will be disposed of. The goods will be disposed of. Whatever money that is realized by the department, they will adjust the penalty and remaining amount will be returned. But once a confiscation order is passed, they will not return. But here they are not passing confiscation order, they are passing only seizure order. So, say this, where the person transporting any goods or the owner of such goods fail to pay the amount of penalty within 15 days from the date of receipt of copy of order, the proper officer shall proceed to dispose of the goods through auction. Okay. Once they sell it through auction, they get some money. Now, who get the money? Department will get the money. What they will do with that money? First, it will be adjusted towards administrative cost of the recovery process. Means, to auction, they will give advertisement and they will incur some expenses. First, that will be taken out. Thereafter, penalty will be recovered. You understood? They have to pay some penalty now. That penalty will be recovered. And balance amount shall be credited to electronic cash ledger of the owner of goods are conveyed. So, the balance amount will be returned to that person. Are you getting this? If they are registered, else it will be credited to their bank account. Suppose, if the balance of the sale proceeds cannot be so paid within 6 months, from the date of sale, it will be deposited into consumer welfare fund. Why it could not be paid? Lorry came, officer stopped, driver jumped and ran away. Now, no one knows who is the owner of the goods. You understood? Then in that case, officer will pass a seizure order, notice, but no one ready to take the notice. Penalty order, no one ready to pay the penalty because we don't know who is the owner of the goods. Now, the conveyance and the goods, everything will be sold. We got the money and we adjusted towards the penalty, etc. Still, department is having money. No one is coming and claiming within six months. It will be transferred to consumer welfare fund. That is the meaning of this. Now, how much is the penalty that is payable? On this, we can get some computation based questions. How much is the penalty that is payable? Check whether owner is coming forward to pay the penalty or owner is not coming forward to pay the penalty. If owner of the goods is not coming forward to pay the penalty, then who is coming forward to pay penalty? Transporter. Transporter. So, owner of goods coming forward to claim release. 
so if it is taxable goods the penalty will be 200 percent of tax payable if it is exempted goods why for exempted goods there will be penalty because exempted goods also should be transported with a valid document called as bill of supply etc otherwise the penalty will be two percent of value of goods or 25,000 whichever is lower two percent of value of goods or 25,000 whichever is lower so I have come across this situation that is one person has ordered for some exempted goods okay in wholesale wholesaler is sending the exempted goods to the retailer actually those goods are exempted there is no GST on that but these exempted goods should be accompanying a bill of supply because the owner of that goods is a registered person registered person sending the exempted goods that goods should be under the cover of a bill of supply and what happened those goods are being taken without any document on that goods so then on that goods the proper officer usually officers and all will be stopping for checking the officer stopped that goods and he is asking to pay you know like 25,000 rupees as a penalty why 25,000 the value of those exempted goods is somewhere like you know 10 lakh rupees 10 lakhs into 2 percent is what 20,000 20, only how he can demand 25,000 so what should be the penalty in that case only 20,000 whichever is higher or whichever is lower whichever is lower so the maximum penalty is how much 25,000 only but remember all these penalties what we are discussing is only under CGST Act the parallel penalty is payable under SGST Act you got it then suppose for release of conveyance what is the penalty penalty payable for release of goods or 1 lakh whichever is lower means what is the maximum penalty for release of conveyance 1 lakh suppose if the owner is not coming forward to claim release then for taxable goods penalty will be 200 percent of tax or 50 percent of value whichever is higher gone suppose if the value of the goods is somewhere like 10 lakhs and the rate of GST CGST is 9 percent so how much will be the penalty penalty will be 10 lakhs into 9 percent into 200 percent 1 lakh 80,000 or B what is B 10 lakhs into 50 percent that is 5 lakhs whichever is higher so 5 lakhs will be the penalty sir but if owner is coming forward only 200 percent of tax is the penalty na yes then why if owner is not coming forward because they want the owner only to come forward if the transporter is coming forward they are keeping a higher penalty so that the owner will come forward then the department will know who is that owner of the goods so that they can go and check his premises also so mainly for that reason they kept this differential penalty so if the owner is not coming forward the penalty will be 200 percent of tax or 50 percent of the value whichever is higher if it is exempted goods also penalty is higher only 5 percent of value of goods or 25,000 whichever is lower here it is 2 percent and here it is 5 percent then for release of conveyance what will be the penalty same penalty payable for release of goods or 1 lakh whichever is lower so the maximum penalty for release of conveyance is 1 lakh so this is about the penalty and this is important this can be tested in exams with this we completed seizure and confiscation under GST